Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to show you a new plugin called Override. Um, I don't know if any of you guys watching this is familiar with a old plugin called Buffer Override, but it's basically a little glitch plugin where you, through with a XY pad, you swipe through it and it glitches up the audio for you. So it basically sounds like your sound card is breaking. Um, it's a pretty cool yet unusual effect in the sense that um, it has very particular and special uses. Um, but uh, it, it, nevertheless, it's still a fun plugin to have and you can make some pretty cool stuff with it. So I was chatting with my friend Altar Wisdom, the guy that made Autograde, Autoplay, and Autoglitch, um, the other plugins that I showcased on my channel before, and I proposed the idea to make a similar plugin uh, to Buffer Override because I felt that I was missing a similar plugin that was in 64-bit um, because Buffer Override 2 is unfortunately only a 32-bit plugin and it's not being developed anymore. Um, I think it's the guys that made Live Cut and uh, Smexoscope um, that, that made this uh, Buffer Override plugin before. Um, and as far as I know, they're not that active anymore in the software plugin scene, or if, if that makes any sense. Um, so it turns out that Altar did a really good job making it. Uh, he sent me a beta plug-in to test for like or like a beta version like a couple of days later after I proposed the idea and I tested it out and I really liked it and now he's going to put it up for sale on his Gumroad page so I'm going to leave a link in the description if you guys uh, feel like getting it. It's a VST version this time so you're not limited to using Ableton. Um, you can use it in Cubase, Logic, um, FL Studio or whatever DAW you like. So, and I think that's a good thing because not everyone uses Ableton. Um, even though I personally like it more than the others I've tested out. So without further ado, let's have a listen to the track I'm currently working on. So here it goes. So yeah, I just had to check that I didn't mute myself. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, what I've come up with so far. So um, for those who know me, you guys know that I struggle a lot with arrangement and completing my shit, but <laughs> hopefully this track is gonna is going to see the light of day. Can I say that? Not sure. So, and I suppose that some of my viewers also struggle with completing tracks and I feel you guys. Um, it's not easy, so we're in the same boat. Um, anyway, 
let's uh, actually check the plugin. That's why we're here. So here's the actual interface. So we've got an XY controller, which you can move around this little alien head. And you've got a freeze option over here. Uh, I'm going to explain this a little bit later. You've got a bit crusher. You've got a smoothing option to prevent clicks and pops. You've got a dry wet knob. You've got LFO shapes over here. And then you have the playback speed of the sub buffer, so um, which means actually <laughs> I'm not into that technical stuff, but if I understand it correctly, it adjusts the playback speed so it like speeds up what the plugin has buffered in its buffer, so to speak, um, if that makes sense. Uh, so you can ha have it in either in free mode or in sync mode, and you can adjust the LFO depth over here can set it to bipolar or unipolar. Uh, then you have the main buffer. It's the same principle here. You can have it in free or in sync mode. So this will, if you go on the y-axis, you adjust the size of the buffer. If you go on the x-axis, you divide the sub-buffer. Um, and then you have the you have LFOs for both of these parameters. So let's and then you have a mute button. Oh yeah, you can mute the plugin as well. So let's hear our sounds in action. Just gonna fire it up right now. If I freeze this now, it's going to freeze the buffer that is already inside the plugin, but the track is going to keep playing in the background, as you can see here. So let's try that. sample and hold sequences but you can do something cool with it oh and mind that i have this on the master channel now so if that wasn't uh, clear enough um so let's try it in sync mode with the sub buffer speed. Absolute madness. Let's try playing around with the LFOs. 
as a little detail, I think the LFOs can go into audible range, so can pretty much make it FM, especially in the sub buffer speed over here. Uh, so let's go for sync mode. In case you haven't figured out, what the size does, it basically let it accumulate more of the actual sound that you're feeding into the signal or into the plugin. So if you have a really small size, it's only going to take one thirty-tooth of, of, of the actual sound that's playing. But I mean, this is like you can grab four bars of the sound and, and let it like... Let's see if I can demonstrate it. Um, see if it makes any sense to you. So, so it, it like repeats each four. It's gonna take the first four bars. Let's freeze it. So yeah, um, you know the drill with this type of plugin, just record yourself having fun with it, cherry pick the best parts and see what you can come up with. Um, I can see myself re putting on the master channel, record some takes and use it as a breakdown maybe. Um, for the real creative 
uh, Ableton DJ, you could probably use this as a some type of effect in your DJ sets. Uh, you could also try it on single tracks and see if you can make your own, I don't know, IDM glitch type of sample pack with it maybe. Um, or just when you're bored, just have a play with it and see if anything cool comes out of it. So yeah, um, that's override my friends. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description on where you can get it. Works in any DAW, so um, as it's a VST, so just you're not limited to using Ableton. So yeah, great job Baltar, really enjoyed this one. <laughs>